to protect the sheep, you got to catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. You understand? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 30 best dramatic movie performances of the century so far. I drink your water. I drink it up. Number 30, Matthew McConaughey, Dallas Buyers Club. Matthew McConaughey is without a doubt one of Hollywood's top leading men and oozes charisma and sex appeal with almost every performance he's put to screen. I got AL721 over in Israel. How can I get some of this? None of those drugs have been approved by the FDA. Screw the FDA. I'm going to be DOA. His role in Dallas Buyers Club, however, was a departure from all of that, with the actor losing 50 pounds to play real-life AIDS patient Ron Woodruff. Dr. Sass, you know this. Once you, once you got the virus, you're married to it, AZT or not. I'm talking about symptoms and survival. Set in the homophobia hotbed of Dallas, Texas, circa 1985, Woodruff's story is one of rebellion and also charity, as we see the rodeo cowboy going to great lengths and risking his own life to provide life-saving treatments to the gay community. It was a career-defining performance from the Texas native, who rightfully took home the Oscar for Best Actor. I mean, goddamn, people are dying. And y'all are all up there afraid that we're going to find an alternative without you. Number 29, Brendan Fraser, The Whale. You can rarely predict where a star will be every 10 years. In 2002, it was hard to imagine a blockbuster actor like Brendan Fraser struggling to find work. In 2012, it seemed like Fraser's career had peaked a long time ago. In 2022, Fraser delivered the performance of a lifetime in The Whale. He had me at at, um, I'm making a movie, so that's why I went. Some didn't realize that Fraser had it in him. For his loyal fans, it was the moment they had been waiting for. Fraser shatters your heart as Charlie, a 600-pound man trying to make peace with the time he has left. Receiving a six-minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival, Fraser re-established himself as a star who deserves to remain in the conversation come 2032 and beyond. People are amazing. Number 28, Renee Zellweger, Judy. Everybody has their troubles and I've had mine. I've probably had everybody else's too. This biopic is about Judy Garland, but parallels can also be drawn to Renee Zellweger's career. Like Garland, Zellweger was one of the industry's biggest stars for years until suddenly disappearing from the limelight. Their Hollywood hiatuses might have been backed by different reasons, but Garland and Zellweger were presented with the same question. Is there any coming back? Especially given how this industry treats women of certain ages? Somewhere over the rainbow. Garland's life ended in tragedy, leaving us to wonder what could have been. Zellweger not only came back, but she returned on the highest note possible with a performance that explores Garland's demons while paying tribute to her. Number 27, Daniel Kaluuya, Judas and the Black Messiah. Fred Hampton is one of the most important names in African-American activism. While this biopic depicts Hampton's natural leadership skills, Daniel Kaluuya's Oscar-winning performance brings out qualities that people didn't always see at rallies his shy side, his vulnerability, and his love for the family that he was just starting to build before the betrayal that abruptly ended his life. That's when I knew I had to protect him. I mean, looking at that photo, how could you not feel that way? As powerful as Hampton appears on stage, commanding a screaming crowd, there's an overarching fear that everything can be taken from him in a flash. Kaluuya authentically balances these two personas, providing a complete portrayal of Hampton that will leave you respecting him even more. Hampton left us too soon, but this performance is just one of the ways that his legacy is still burning strong. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder a revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. Number 26, Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman. Carrie Mulligan played a promising young woman whose life took a turn after her best friend met a tragic end. Mulligan's Cassie dedicates her nights to freaking out quote-unquote nice guys who don't understand the meaning of consent. As Cassie tracks down those responsible for her best friend's demise, her master plan comes into frustration, keeping us guessing with every move. Cassie is intimidating and unforgiving, but also hilarious and outspoken to the point that we'd like to hang out with her. 
being Cassie's friend is much better than the alternative of being in her notebook. You know, I was affected by it too, okay? I mean, it's every guy's worst nightmare getting accused like that. Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? Number 25, Kate Blanchett, Carol, show, don't tell. It's a fundamental rule of storytelling, yet one that many filmmakers neglect to follow. With Kate Blanchett's Carol, almost everything is on the surface, requiring the audience and Rooney Maris Therese to read between the lines. I mean, I wanna ask you things, but I'm not sure that you want that. Ask me things, please. When Carol leaves behind her gloves at the store where Therese works, one could see it as an innocent mistake. It's truly an invitation to further explore the chemistry between the two. Given the 1950s period and Carol's marital status, the subtlest codes have to speak a mile a minute. When Carol and Therese finally express their love, it's as satisfying as it is romantic. I love you. Blanchett is mysterious, exquisite, and devastating as a woman navigating romance, parenting, divorce, and social status in a trialing time. Number 24, Octavia Spencer, The Help. In 1997, Octavia Spencer moved to LA at the suggestion of Tate Taylor. About a decade and a half later, Taylor directed Spencer to an Oscar-winning performance. By this point, Spencer had already popped up in numerous movies and shows. With her funny, empathetic, and fearless portrayal of Minnie Jackson, though, more audiences came to see what a versatile talent Spencer is. What law's gonna say you got to be nice to your maid? You don't have to do this now, Minnie. You damn right I don't. You two give me heart palpitations. Minnie has the guts to do to her employers what most people in her shoes would only fantasize about. However, Minnie still struggles to summon the strength to leave her abusive husband, finding courage in an unlikely friendship. Spencer was offered similar parts after the help, but she felt she had already played, quote, the best damn maid role written, inspiring her to pursue new horizons. We ought to burn the chicken a little. Many don't burn chicken. Number 23, Christoph Waltz, Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards is one of Quentin Tarantino's best, but he almost didn't have the courage to make it. This is due to the character of Hans Landa, a role he thought might be unplayable. He nearly pulled the plug on the film until he auditioned Christoph Waltz, who wasn't widely known outside of Europe. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. The embodiment of Nazi evil, the audience is horrified whenever Landa walks onto the screen. Yet Waltz is such a scene stealer that we also get excited. Behind his charm, wit, and unique way of saying bingo, every fiber of Landa is callous. Landa relishes in every maniacal action he commits with smiling glee, seemingly being a step ahead of everyone. You can't always predict what a bastard will do next, however. Where are you mad? What have you done? I made a deal with you, gentlemen, for that man's life! Number 22, Kate Winslet, Little Children. Kate Winslet topped herself in Little Children. Sarah Pierce is trapped in a loveless marriage and boring suburban life. Something inside Sarah is awakened when she meets a hunky fellow parent named Brad. Sarah and Brad's relationship seems destined to end in heartbreak, but they delude themselves and the audience into thinking that it will somehow work out. How long are we gonna sneak around together? How long can that last? I can't do this anymore. No, no, don't say that. As long as I know that we're gonna have this. Have what? <laughs> what is this? Some might call Sarah a feminist. Others might call her reckless. Either way, we empathize with Sarah's desire for something more out of life. In the end, the most Sarah can do is be a dedicated mother, hoping that her daughter's life will be more fulfilled. Winslet has arguably never been more compelling to watch on screen. <laughs> Number 21, Andy Serkis, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. With his game-changing performance as Gollum, Andy Serkis highlighted the advantages of digital makeup. While he had help from a team of special effects wizards, Gollum wouldn't have been nearly as believable without Serkis on set, providing the character's expressions, movements, and raspy voice. They're thieves. They're filthy little thieves. Just as the character possesses a split personality, the audience goes back and forth on how to feel about Gollum slash Smeagol. Master's my friend. 
You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. Not listening. Ranging from humorous to sympathetic to intimidating, Circus runs a gamut of emotions in the role, while also taking on an assortment of physical obstacles. The work that goes into motion capture remains underappreciated, with Circus being the poster child for the challenges it entails. What did they steal? Number 20. Jesse Eisenberg, The Social Network Going into this decade, Eisenberg was written off as a Michael Sarah clone. That all changed when the young actor escaped into the role of Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. While some have called this film's historical accuracy into question, there's no denying that Zuckerberg became one of the world's most influential, powerful, and controversial figures before even turning 25. I believe I deserve some recognition from this board. Eisenberg captures this to a T, depicting Zuckerberg as a tech genius who's awkward yet assertive, timid yet intimidating, and generally the smartest one in the room. Even when he's not the smartest person present, Zuckerberg's definitely the richest, and he's well aware of this. You have part of my attention, you have the minimum amount. In addition to Eisenberg's multi-layered portrayal, Andrew Garfield delivered a breakout performance as Eduardo Severin, Zuckerberg's friend-slash-business partner turned bitter enemy. I'm not signing those papers. We will get the signature. <laughs> Tell me this isn't about me getting into the Phoenix. Number 19. Rosamund Pike Gone Girl Although she had already established herself as an actress, Rosamund Pike's riveting work in Gone Girl made audiences feel as if they were seeing her for the first time. You think you'd be happy with a nice Midwestern girl? No way, baby. I'm it. Pike's performance as Amy Elliott Dunn snuck up on us in more ways than one. Pike initially paints Amy as a fragile woman who's trapped in a struggling marriage and living in the shadow of a children's book series she inspired. As Gone Girl shifts to Amy's perspective, Pike removes her mask to reveal a manipulative, diabolical mastermind who's pulling everyone's strings. Because sometimes, the way he looks at me, I think, man of my dreams, father of my child, this man of mine may kill me. Cheeky, charming, complex, and creepy, Pike leaves the viewer constantly guessing what Amy will do next. Pike never goes too over the top in the role, however, creating a psychopath who's surprisingly and hauntingly believable. For Valentine's Day, I thought I'd buy a gun. That is how crazy I've become. Nick wants me gone, but he won't ask for a divorce. Number 18. Mahershala Ali, Moonlight Appearances can be deceiving. Mahershala Ali's Juan is a drug dealer, so obviously he's a bad guy, right? Well, he is contributing to the crack epidemic, not only hurting his customers, but their loved ones as well. When Juan meets the neglected Chiron, however, he shows his true colors. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you want. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. He emerges as the father that Shiro never had, trying to provide stability and send him down the right path. Had Juan been raised in another environment, his tender side might have been embraced. Instead, Juan must play the role he was born into to survive, even though he'll still likely die young. Ali brings warmth to the character, who wishes to do right by Shiro. But can this compensate for his other actions? You gotta know right now. Uh -huh. Not yet. Number 17. Francis McDormand. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. We live in frustrating times, and perhaps no modern character better epitomizes these feelings than Francis McDormand's Mildred Hayes. You ain't trying to make me believe in reincarnation or something, are you? Because you're pretty, but you ain't her. She got killed. We'd like to live in a world where the police track down all wrongdoers, justice is served, and we're left with some sense of closure. It's not always that simple, as is the case with the unsolved murder of Mildred's teenage daughter. Mildred just wants answers, but she only hits roadblocks around every turn. With the world against her, Mildred's rebelling turns into anarchy. It does little to help her cause, but McDormand helps us to understand that Mildred feels as if she has nowhere else to go. All she has left is the illusion of control, which she will reach for no matter what the consequences. 
At least I had a day of hoping, and that's more than I've had for a while. Number 16, Halle Berry, Monsters Ball. Only two years after portraying the first African-American to be nominated for the Best Actress Oscar, Dorothy Dandridge, Halle Berry became the first woman of color to win in this category. Ironically, there was a point where Berry feared Monsters Ball would end her career due in part to the risque subject matter. It's a, it's a very passionate, but very kind of explicit Very scene. explicit, yeah. and I thought if, if, if people don't get it, you know, this, this will be bad. Yeah. Yet Berry felt she had to take the role. Her risks paid off with one of the most devastating and resilient performances we've ever seen. Every time it looks like Barry's Letitia has been through the worst, another catastrophic storm awaits. You gonna take her home, ain't you? While by no means an easy film to watch, Barry's bravery sees us through the roller coaster of grief. She may break your heart, but Letitia's will to survive subsequently mends it. Number 15, Ellen Burstyn, Requiem for a Dream. I never thought I'd be on television. I'm just a... That's right, you on television. We've seen some amazing films about substance use, although few have put the audience in the character's shoes like Requiem for a Dream. Ma, I can hear you grinding your teeth from here. Well, that goes away at night. At night? Yeah, when I take the green one. 30 minutes, I'm asleep. This psychological drama has an all-around striking cast, but it was the legendary Ellen Burstyn who received a Best Actress Oscar nomination for her unbelievably committed performance as Sarah Goldfarb. What are you doing? You revolutionized your life. Why are you doing it? Whereas most of the film's central characters fall victim to heroin, the widowed Sarah can't say no to pharmaceutically enhanced weight loss. Sarah's determination to look slim on television turns into an obsession, taking a drastic toll on her body and mind. She thus serves as a disturbing reminder that drug use comes in many different forms. All the while, Burstyn is electrifying as a woman who's plunging deeper and deeper into a bad dream come true. I love you. I love you too, Mom. Number 14, Kristen Bale, American Psycho. Kristen Bale, a known method actor, went through a startling evolution for this now cult classic film. Sure, Bale is a good looking guy like Patrick Bateman is. There is an idea of a Patrick Bateman, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. Just as Bateman has his unnerving body care ritual though, Bale fully committed to getting the Bateman look down, even having his teeth capped. Physical appearance aside, Bale seemed an unlikely candidate to play an axe-murdering psychopath at the time, being best known for his childhood roles in movies like Newsies. Bale changed our perception of him here, balancing dark humor, terror, and extreme narcissism in a riveting performance. Author Brett Easton Ellis thought his book was unfilmable. It might have been without Bale. But they should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey, Paul! Ah! Number 13, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Capote. For years, Philip Seymour Hoffman was often listed among character actors who might not be household names, despite always turning in reliable performances. That all changed with Capote, which propelled Hoffman to A-lister status. Hey, this is my work, Perry. I'm working. And when you want to tell me what I need to hear, you let me know. Truman Capote was such an over-the-top persona that it would be easy for any portrayal to feel like a caricature. While Hoffman gets Capote's mannerisms and accent down, his goal wasn't to deliver a spot-on impression. The true challenge was expressing the author's, quote, vitality and the nuances. The result is a more layered portrait than some might have anticipated. Hoffman's Capote is confident, but lonely, insecure, and regretful underneath, sacrificing part of his soul for his art. After you've seen the film, you will never look at Hoffman or Capote the same way again. I did everything I could. Okay. Number 12, Jamie Foxx, Ray. There have been so many music biopics over the past couple of decades that they're starting to blend into each other. Yet Jamie Foxx's turn as Ray Charles still rises above all others as the gold standard. I'm singing about my feelings for you, about how I love you. What could be more natural than that? 
Although Fox was dubbed for the film's singing portions, everything behind the piano is all him. This is even more impressive considering that Fox glued his eyes closed, making him blind for much of the shoot. Fox only got to meet the real Charles once, playing the blues on separate pianos. Charles gave Fox his seal of approval, saying, quote, the kids got it. Charles died shortly before the film's release, with Fox's Best Actor winning performance serving as the perfect tribute to the legend and the man. Baby, when I walk out that door, I walk out alone in the dark. I'm trying to do something that ain't nobody ever done in music and business. But I can't do it if I'm alone everywhere I go. Number 11. J.K. Simmons – Whiplash J.K. Simmons has been one of the 21st century's most consistently entertaining character actors. He landed the role of a lifetime in Whiplash, winning an Academy Award for his chilling performance as jazz instructor Terence Fletcher. This merciless teacher conducts his band with the ferocity of a drill sergeant. That's great. Yeah, sorry. Fletcher can go from being calm and reasonable to chucking a symbol at a student's head. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, was I rushing or was I dragging? Uh -huh. In Fletcher's mind, his brutal methods are justified as long as students reach their full potential, even if a few get pushed beyond their limits. As cold-blooded as Fletcher can be, Simmons unearths the character's humanity. He molds Fletcher into a Shakespearean antagonist who vindicates every cruel action he commits in the name of making beautiful music. And that's more than most people ever do. And I will never apologize for how I tried. Number 10. Leonardo DiCaprio – The Wolf of Wall Street 2013 saw some amazing performances, and despite not winning the Oscar, many would argue that the year's best actor was Leonardo DiCaprio as Jordan Belfort. DiCaprio's portrayal of the titular wolf demonstrates that there's really no line between your average Wall Street hotshot and a fraternity brother. Every waking moment is a crazy party, making you feel so invincible that consequences appear non-existent. Look, <laughs> I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's, that's okay, that doesn't matter. The real question is this, was all this legal? This makes the fall from the top all the more brutal, but you never doubt that Jordan would do it all again in a heartbeat. Belfort requires a performer who can act privileged enough to despise, yet charismatic to the point that we can't look away. DiCaprio sells the performance, along with this pen. Sell me this pen. Number 9. Natalie Portman – Black Swan To watch Black Swan, you need to mentally prepare yourself. Not just because of the more graphic moments, but because Natalie Portman's performance is so emotionally draining. just want to be perfect. You what? want to be perfect. Every second Portman is on screen, we can sense everything she threw into this role, from the nearly 20-pound weight loss, to the six months of ballet training, to the emotional turmoil that Nina conveys. To an extent, the role mirrors Portman's career. Just as Nina must transform from innocent white swan to seductive black swan, Portman strove to mature out of her child star days with more daring roles. Nina was the boldest part she could have asked for. She's a vision of perfection in the role, which reminds us that such perfection can come at a price. What did you do? What did you do? I felt it. What? Perfect. Number 8. Tom Hanks – Castaway Being a one-man show for most of its runtime, the success of Castaway almost entirely depended on its lead. Fortunately, Tom Hanks was more than up to the task of carrying the film on his shoulders. Hanks's Oscar-nominated performance starts off very dialogue-driven, playing Chuck Noland as a workaholic who's demanding, yet caring and always likable. 87 hours is an eternity. The cosmos was created in less time. Wars have been fought, and nations toppled in 87 hours. Fortunes made and squandered. Once Chuck is stranded on a deserted island, the performance begins to rely more on Hanks's body language and facial expressions. Hanks lost over 50 pounds during shooting, and we really feel that physical transformation. We do. We have time. Look, the wind's still blowing in from the west. What's more, we experience Chuck's isolation as he turns to a volleyball for companionship. Wilson! Wilson! While Chuck is a tragic figure in many respects, Hanks's humor and sincerity make him a bonfire of hope. Look what I have created! Number 7. Charlize Theron – Monster I didn't want to die thinking that maybe… 
maybe you could have loved me. So I killed him. I shot him, all right? Unrecognizable is a word that gets tossed around a lot when it comes to biopic performances, almost to the point that it's become a cliché. In the case of Charlize Theron as Eileen Warnos, though, few other words do it justice. There's so much more to Theron's transformation than the uncanny prosthetics and 30 pounds she gained. She gets inside Warnos's head, unearthing what made her a monster. In doing so, Theron also finds Warnos's humanity, although not to the point where we're willing to forgive the atrocities she committed. Theron got into character by traveling through Warnos's old stomping grounds of Daytona, Florida with director Patty Jenkins, who knew there was only one person who could tackle this demanding part. If you could forgive me for... Because I don't know... I don't know if I could forgive myself. Number 6. Javier Bardem – No Country for Old Men Javier Bardem was the embodiment of evil in his Oscar-winning performance as Anton Chigurh. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. The relentless Anton almost seems like a supernatural entity who will destroy anything or anyone that stands in his way, showing zero compassion in the process. Anton is very much a human being, however, which makes Bardem's portrayal all the more harrowing. I know where it is. I know something better. What's that? I know what it's going to be. While Anton may bleed like any other person, whether or not he possesses a soul is another question entirely. We don't get a sense that Anton enjoys causing pain and suffering. Rather, it's as if he doesn't have a choice, living by a strict set of principles and judging a person's fate based on a coin toss. Step out of that car, please, sir. What is that? I need you to step out of that car, sir. Whatever Anton is, Bardem's performance personified the darkest side of humankind. Will you hold still? Please. Number 5. Toni Collette – Hereditary Performances in horror movies often go overlooked by the Academy, hence why Toni Collette infamously was not nominated for Hereditary. While this Ari Aster film includes supernatural elements like covens and demonic possession, it also organically incorporates real-world horrors like fatal accidents, sudden loss, and the realization that your mother might have been happier if you were never born. I never wanted to be your mother. This is where Colette shines the most, playing a parent overcome with grief, resentment, and the walls of sanity crumbling around her. When Colette does take on a more monstrous form, her screen presence is as disturbing as anything we've experienced this century so far. I love you, Steve. I love you so, so much. Colette manages to be the most sympathetic and scariest character, a feat we haven't quite seen since Reagan in The Exorcist. Number 4. Jake Gyllenhaal – Nightcrawler Despite widespread praise, Jake Gyllenhaal shockingly wasn't even nominated for his chilling work in Nightcrawler. Gyllenhaal created a villain for the ages in Lou Bloom, a con artist who, as far as we're concerned, has no past. We know nothing about who he was before the film's events. He's almost like an alien who fell out of the sky. He may look human and talk like one, albeit in an unnervingly calm manner. What he lacks is the basic human emotion of empathy, something that isn't required in the stringer profession. In place of compassion, Lou compensates with ambition, not letting anyone or anything stand in his way of getting what he wants. You filmed him dying. Yeah, that's what I do, it's my job. I like to say that if you're seeing me, you're having the worst day of your life. Number 3. Joaquin Phoenix, The Master there was a period in Joaquin Phoenix's career when he seemed lost and confused. This was largely because people didn't realize he was shooting a mockumentary called I'm Still Here. After playing such a warped version of himself, it's fitting that Phoenix's next part would be Freddy Quell, a wandering soul desperately seeking guidance. Tell me why you're not with her if you love her so much. I told her I'd come back and I never went back and now I just, I gotta get back to her. Why don't you go back? I don't know. Why don't you go back? I don't know! Freddy seemingly finds what he's been looking for in a cult helmed by an enigmatic leader. From the Navy to Lancaster Dodd, Freddy has spent much of his life following others. We're left to ask if Freddy can ever be his own master. For that matter, can any of us? In any case, Phoenix is a master of the screen, commanding every scene he's in with an unpredictable allure. And I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Window, and I can leave anytime I want. But I choose not to, I choose to stay here. Number 2. Daniel Day-Lewis – There Will Be Blood Do you understand, Eli? That's more to the point. Do you understand? 
I drink your water. I drink it up. Few actors have taken more chances throughout their careers than Daniel Day-Lewis, for starters. Just look at his work in Gangs of New York or Lincoln. There Will Be Blood might have been his biggest swing, though, resulting in a performance that hits the audience like a tidal wave of oil. Paul Thomas Anderson had Day-Lewis in mind while writing the character of Daniel Plainview, an oil baron whose greed snowballs into insanity. Day-Lewis drew some inspiration from the treasure of the Sierra Madre director John Huston and old recordings from the film's era. Yet it's hard to compare Plainview's voice, delivery, or presence to anything we've seen before or since. Day-Lewis created a towering, unpredictable figure who stands on his own. This performance could have backfired in so many ways, but everything about it is iconic. Say it louder! I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my boy! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Heath Ledger, The Dark Knight Whenever an actor steps into an established role, they run the risk of repeating their predecessors. With Heath Ledger as the Joker, it was as if we were meeting this character for the first time. Ledger originally auditioned to play the Dark Knight in Batman Begins. At the time, many could imagine Ledger in that role, but they were more skeptical of him playing the Clown Prince of Crime. The second Ledger takes off his mask and delivers his first line, any doubts are swept away by a haunting, transcendent, and darkly humorous performance. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. We've seen others come close to capturing what Ledger achieved with the character. Joaquin Phoenix's 2019 embodiment in Joker is certainly nothing to scoff at. But Ledger's portrayal is truly lightning in a bottle, winning him a posthumous Academy Award. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? You want to know how I got them? Which of these performances stays with you to this day? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for offering me the position, but working for myself is more in line with my skills and career goals. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.